Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakah Kodash. And I also want to give double honors to our elders and apostles, the great millstone, the men who rule well, the men who taught us is true. Okay? And, uh, Salak, yeah. Uh, let's see. And pretty much, you know, just making a, a video, you know, which was inspired, uh, you know, conversation I was having with a brother, you know, on, uh, through the uh, text message. Pretty much, you know, uh, this video that we were, um, that he had sent me, you know, uh, about, uh, which was in the video, you know, the, the, uh, the content of the video was, you know, two, the two thirds of, of our nation that are, you know, held up at a, in a high regard right now, you know, rappers and such, you know, that were showing off, uh, their, their money, you know, showing off the outfits and stuff like that, showing off how much money they had really, you know, they're living good, you know, but, um, you know. Pretty much the precept that came to mind is uh, what what uh, sparked up the uh, the idea for the video. And the brother, you know, suggested I do a video on it, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and read it and uh, talk about it, right? So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 126 and verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy, right? Which the ones that are sowing in tears right now are the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, Okay. Which the nation of Israel are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? And those of you of confusion of face, those that may not look like a, you know, typical Negro, Latino, or Native American, but your spirit resonates with this truth. And basically, you know, uh, going into the precept, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Which, uh, sowing in tears, you know, because, you know, right now, you know, when you look and when you read the scriptures, you know, Yahweh Shai, he said in the book of uh, St. John, Go ahead and get it real quick. Just to show that we're likened unto laborers, you know. Men who, who were called to do this work, you know, which uh, sowing and reaping, that's uh, that's, that's labor work, you know. Like being like a, a farmer is someone that sows seeds and then reaps. When, when the fruit sprouts up, they reap what they sowed, right? Well, we're likened unto laborers, you know. Uh... This is the book of St. John, chapter 15, and verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That's the Lord speaking, Yahushai. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You know, but the point is that, you know, the, the reason I brought up this precept is to show you that we were called, what, to to um to bring forth fruit. You know, we're... we're we're likened unto laborers, you know, men who are, who are supposed to be doing this work. We're called in to do this so that what? So that we may, you know, uh, in the end, Lord willing, we're of that number. You know, we may receive our, our, our prize, if you will, our crown, you know. But um, now, right now, I want to get into the sowing, the sowing in tears, okay, because that, that's indicative of what? Of, of uh, because when you're called in to do this work, you know, it's not a walk in the park, you know, we catch hell, we go through things that you know the rest of the nation of Israel, you know, doesn't go through, you know, right now, two thirds of our people, especially those that are you know set up, uh, and high, you know, the sellouts, if you will, they they are ones that what they have uh, the most, you know, and right now, we're the ones that have the least, you know, or have just enough, okay. Because we're sowing in tears, all right? This is Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. And the Lord, Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Yeah, because we're the ones that, you know, are, are sowing in tears. We're the ones that are actually, you know, doing the work we're the ones sighing and crying we're the ones out there on the highways and the byways you know rain sleet snow you know and we're also you know catching hell on, on a day-to-day -day basis you know we're going through things that the rest of the nation of israel just isn't going through so we're sowing in tears you know we're doing this work you know and um it's a lot okay, let me see if i was gonna get any more yeah all right so yeah basically you know we're the ones that are doing the work we're the ones sowing in tears, you know? So, you know, we, we catch hell in this truth, you know? I'm gonna get another precept in the book of Acts, you know? Cause still, I'm still touching on the first half of the precept 
of uh, sowing in tears, you know, because it's a part of this. That that's a part of this truth, you know. That's why in the book of Sirach, when you read the book of Sirach, the second chapter, which I encourage you know, especially new brothers coming into the faith, to read it, the whole chapter, the whole book of the whole Salaki, the whole uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha, the second chapter. Read the whole thing. Read it and reread it, and reread it, and you know, get the understanding of it, you know. In, in due time, because you know, it's the beginning of it is, uh, my son, if thou comes to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You know, because what that's talking about, what uh, preparing, you know, uh, preparing yourself for temptations, because you know we're gonna go through trials. You know, the Lord's gonna try our faith. You know, which ultimately it's for our betterment. Okay, which we're gonna get into, Lord willing. All right, through the Spirit. So this is the Book of Acts, chapter fourteen, and verse twenty-two. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we through much tribulation so like it, that that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the most high. Right. You know, because what? For us to get to the kingdom, you know, we have to go through that straight and narrow, you know. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna get a precept real quick in the book of Matthews, you know. This is Matthews chapter seven. And 13, enter ye in at the straight gate. And before I continue on, the word straight here is not straight as in like straight line. It's S-T-R-A-I-T, which means uh, rigorous, you know, Di you know, like a, a, a hard road, you know, a, a salaki, a hard, you know, a position like of difficulty, if I'm not mistaken, you know, brothers can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, I'm using my phone to record. I can't look it up. I'm just going off of memory. But um, this is a. Matthew 7 and uh, so like you. Yeah, Matthew 7 and 13 enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way which leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat verse 14 here's the point because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it yeah because you know the the um right now you know for us to get to the kingdom of heaven you know to be in that uh, uh state of, uh, of Israelite supremacy, you know, we have to go through this uh, to receive our crown we, and to and to get to the kingdom to be of the first fruits, Lord willing, we're of that number. We have to go through, you know, a lot, you know, we have to, um, you know, endure all these temptations, okay, do the work, you know, sowing in tears, man, all right, and hold the faith to the very end. That's what we have to do right now here on this side, all right, because we're the ones that are sowing in tears. Meanwhile, you know, two-thirds of our nation aren't even, you know, aren't even running the race, all right? We're the ones that are running the race, all right? So, um, let me see if we got any more precepts on that. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get um, one more in uh, Second Corinthians. Because, you know, we're the ones that are, uh, hey, we're, we're troubled on every side, so to speak, you know? Like like it said, like, hey, like it's written. This is uh, Second Corinthians uh, chapter 4. And um, I'm going to start at verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Right. You know, basically, you know, we're the poor, you know, the rich in faith, you know. Let me get that real quick in the book of uh, James real quick. This is... Uh, so I can bear with me. Yeah. You know, because right now, we're the ones that are uh, on the bottom, so to speak. You know, this is James chapter 2 and 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him. Right. You know, because right now we're the lowly of our nation. You know, the, the real low people of our nation are the ones that are on top, you know, right now, they're, they're the ones that are, that seem to be winning, you know, but they're, in the end, they don't, they don't get the victory, you know, because, you know, they're not the ones that are out here doing what we're doing, which is the work of Yahweh Hashem Shai to, you know, then receive that crown of life, Lord willing, we're of that number, all right, so, I'm gonna go ahead and reread that in Psalms, you know, just to get a refresher, this is Psalms 126 and 5, they that sow in tears, which is what we're doing, 
You know, that's why I brought out those precepts to show that we're the ones catching hell. We're sowing, doing the work. And, you know, we're sowing in tears, crying, you know, catching hell, going through what we go through. And now we're going to get into this part. Uh, Psalms 126 and 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Now we're going to go into the part where we're going to reap because you see, while well, two thirds of our nation was out here lollygagging and, you know, ignoring and scoffing at the prophets while they were doing that we were getting we were getting this this uh this wisdom this knowledge and this understanding and we were also the ones that were what that were doing what was right in the sight of the lord and getting a good graces with the lord we were the ones repenting praying fasting doing the work you know coming back to the lord in truth and in sincerity you know, while two thirds of our nation was, you know, doing the exact opposite, you know, continuing on being, you know, uh, being ignorant Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. All right. It's a lot. Yeah, I got some things in the way. But anyway. Um, but what the times that are to come, which is the times of Jacob's trouble, when the Lord is going to, you know, when the highest is going to, you know, begin to visit the earth, you know, bringing the plagues upon Egypt, which is uh, like as before, like mentioned in the book of Second Esdras. Uh, which uh, that Egypt is talking about America, you know, because the Lord is going to judge America, all right, Babylon the Great, as it is known in the scriptures. While um, two thirds of our people weren't preparing, we were. We were the ones that were sowing in tears, okay? And we, Lord willing, were of that number. We will be the ones reaping in joy, you know? So this is um, Luke chapter 6 and verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes. On his disciples and said blessed blessed be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of the Most High and you know when we read these things you know we ought to have faith in these things okay so we need to have faith you know the scriptures say put on as the elect in the book of Colossians the uh, third chapter uh, I believe the 12th verse if, uh, the 12th verse if I'm not mistaken um, so yeah I'm gonna keep reading blessed blessed be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of the Most High. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now. Going back to that sowing in tears, right? For ye shall laugh. You know? I'm going to keep reading. Uh, blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you. And cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Right. You know, because, you know, soon and even now, you know, brothers are being persecuted, you know, for uh, the Lord's sake. You know, for our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashayak, you know. And basically, though, you know, uh, we're the ones in those times, you know, Lord willing, we're up that number. In those times of Jacob's trouble, more specifically as well, you know, we're the ones that are going to be great. We're going to be off in those, we're going to be well off in those times to lock you because what? Because the Lord told us, man. All right, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter. It's a lot because what? Like, like we were sowing in tears, right? We were getting uh, this wisdom, this knowledge, and understanding, right? Well, the, the Lord, well, I'm gonna read this to better, you know, I'll let the scripture speak in, instead. This is Isaiah. It's Isaiah chapter 65, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, power. Behold, my servants shall eat. Which, you know, servants are the ones that are doing the work. All right, the, the elect, Salakia. You know, those that endure unto the end. That's why, you know, Yahweh, Shai said in the book of St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get that. Because we have to endure, you know. We have to endure to the end. All right. This is Matthew, St. Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall, so like it, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have to endure unto the end. All right. We have to do uh, the work and hold the faith until the very end. This is Isaiah 65, and I'm going to start back from the top at verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yabashim Yashai, power. Behold, my servants shall eat. Right? 
Uh, I'm going to keep reading. But ye shall be hungry. Yeah, because what? The two-thirds of, of the nation of Israel, you know, they weren't, they didn't find favor in the sight of the Lord. They they didn't, you know, eat the roll and, 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 and do what they were supposed to do as Israelites. Okay? Because being an Israelite is not just like being any other old person, you know. You can't just, when you, you're, an, if you're an Israelite, you know, that, that's a, a, our lot is to be, you know, better than everybody else. Our lot is um, to be, uh, you know, uh, rulers, you know. That, that's our lot. Our lot is to be the Lord's people, the Lord's chosen people, okay. We're not just any old regular people. We're not like these heathen that, you know, don't have a power, okay. Uh, I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to just start from the top. Uh Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shai, power, behold, my servants shall eat. You know, and going back to the precept in Psalms, those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Okay, because in those times that are to come, Jacob's trouble, you know, when there's not going to be, you know, when you read about the uh, the plagues that are going to come onto America in the book of uh, 2nd Ezra, uh, ver uh, chapters uh, 15 and 16, you know, all those things that are going to befall America. During the time of Jacob's trouble, there's not going to be any food, any water, you know, uh, you no know, clean water, you know, no food. But guess what? The servants of the Lord, those that were sowing in tears, you know, Lord willing, that's us. We're going to reap in joy in those times. Okay. The scriptures say in Isaiah chapter 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. I'm going to get it. I'm already in the book of Isaiah anyway. Might as well get it. This is Isaiah. Chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh Shemiel Shai, is his treasure, right? You know, because what? You know, while we're the ones, you know, sighing and crying for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, you know, we've been eating this roll and speaking unto the house of Israel, okay, doing the work, being diligent, okay? Well, hey. The Lord said he's not, you know, the scriptures say uh, that the Lord isn't unrighteous to forget our labor of love. You know, going back into, you know, labor, going, doing the work. Because, you know, sowing in tears and reaping in joy. Okay, because in those times, you know, if we endure to that time and we're of the elect, right? We're going to be, we're going to reap the benefits of, of what we're doing now. Which is, you know, catching hell. Okay, going through spiritual trials. You know, financial trials, you know, physical trials, you know, your you know, your demon giving you troubles, okay? Uh, Esau oppressing you with tickets. You know, I just got a ticket the other day that I didn't even know about, you know? Two of them, actually. It's my second one, you know, from cameras and stuff like that. Those are things that we go through as, as men of the Lord, you know? You know, Satan's real childish, you know, throwing unnecessary things in front of your path, all to, to throw, trying to throw you off of your game, you know, but... A hey, Lord willing through the Spirit, we're gonna stay stable, stay in these scriptures, and just do the work and cast our burdens upon the Lord. You know, as writ as it is written in the Book of Psalms. So I'm gonna keep reading. Um, I'm gonna start from the top. I, I love the scripture. This is Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, Power. Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Yeah, two thirds of our people are gonna be hungry. Okay, they're gonna be, you know, abandoned. You know. That um, the scriptures say, riches profit not in the day of wrath. Okay, so two thirds of our nation, especially you sellouts out there, you know, that sold out for some money, okay, whether it was chump change or a lot of money, you're going to be hungry in those times, okay? Those FRNs aren't going to help you, okay? The scriptures, like the scriptures, like, as, like, like uh, as it is written, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, you know? This, these, knowing these scriptures, having the role in our, in our mind, going back to that Ezekiel 9 and 4. That mark, the Hebrew word there is the wall, which is the exemption from judgment. I should have gone into it. You know, I'm recording on my phone. But, um, you know, they don't have that. Two-thirds of our nation don't have that. Lord willing, we're of that number. We do have that the wall, that exemption from judgment. Okay? You know, that, that wisdom, the wisdom and knowledge that we're acquiring right now is is what's going to help us in those times. You know, our faith in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is, is what's going to deliver us in those times, you know. I'm going to keep reading. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, and here's, here's the point. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, 
but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Yeah, because we're the ones that are sowing in the tears right now, and we shall reap in joy, Lord willing, we're of that number, man. Okay? And while two-thirds, the tables, basically the tables are going to turn, okay? You know, right now the two-thirds are out here, you know, uh, uh, in, in mirth, right, being joyful, you know, as in the, like it's, as it is written, you know, like in the days of Noah, even in marriage and stuff like that, you know, relaxing, you know, they're joy, they're joyful right now, well, we're crying right now, we're, we're sowing in tears, but hey, Lord willing, we're of that number, you know, we're gonna reap in joy, man, all right, so that's pretty much, you know, all the verses that, I, uh, the precepts that I wanted to bring out, you know, hey, we got to hang in there, keep having the faith, keep holding the faith. We have to fight the good fight of faith. As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. In the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, if I'm not mistaken. Get it real quick. This is 2 Timothy, chapter... Actually, I think it's in first, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, 1 Timothy, chapter 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, one, two, thou art also called, which, you know, we are called to do this work, to be a laborer for Yahweh Shem Shai. We're called to be warriors for the Lord, you know, a soldier for Yahweh Shai. Lay hold on eternal life, one, two, thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses, which were the ones sighing and crying, man. Okay? But hey, Lord willing, brothers, we're, we're of that elect, you know, we're, the, we're sowing in tears right now, but Lord willing, we're going to reap in joy, all right? So with that, I want to give all praises, all glory and honor unto our power. Allah Hayanawa Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Wa, Racha Kodash, you know, in the Racha Kodash, you know. Uh, yeah, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our elders and apostles of great Melsoon, the men who taught us this truth, okay, and the men who rule well, okay, in a sincere Shalom Wa Barakim to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right? Shalom.